and welcome to the wild. Today, to kick off the new and improved wild, we're going to be taking a quick lesson in biology. Today's topic, phylogeny. There is a general estimation by biologists that there are anywhere from 5 to 100 million species alive on the planet today. Now, I'm not talking about only animals. That number is estimated to be more around 1 million but also plants, fungi, bacteria, anything that's really considered to be alive, from the smallest single cell to the giant blue whale. So this is my admittedly pretty artistically terrible drawing of the phylogenic tree of life. It's made up of three major groups, bacteria, archaea, and eukaryota. Within these major groups, there are smaller sections. These sections are all connected, like branches and twigs, while all living organisms are merely the leaves. The premise of the tree of life is that all organisms started way down here at the roots with one common ancestor. Now, we're only going to be concerned with one branch of the phylogenic tree, Kingdom Animalia. Here is another hand-drawn diagram, and this one is actually accurate, if not artistic artistically well done. So today I'm going to run you guys through this branch really quick. It all starts down here with the ancestral colonial coanoflagellate, the common ancestor of all animals. From there it splits further into two groups, parazoa and nematozoa. Parazoans don't are animals without true tissue. This group is made up of periphera, the sponges. I would have liked to start with them, but it's a little too cold for me to be snorkeling and hitting the reefs, so we'll get to them in about a month or so. Now, Eumatozoa encompasses all the other animal species, species with true tissue. From there, the branch parts into radiata and bilateria, which are forms of anatomical symmetry. Those species with radial symmetry can be cut up like a pizza or a pie, and all those pieces will look the same. Those with bilateral symmetry can only be cut down a singular line that splits the animal into two mirroring images. For humans, we get split right down the middle ventrodorsally. So, the bilateria group is then divided by the type of body cavity that the organism possesses. Acelomates don't have a body cavity. Pseudocelomates have a body cavity, but is not considered the true body cavity of coelomates. From coelomates, the organisms are divided into which opening in the body develops first. The mouth does in the protostomes, and the anus develops first in the deuterostomes. When the water temperature warms up a little bit, we're going to be checking out phylum mollusca. But our first feature is going to be from the protostomes, phylum arthropoda. That's your insects, your spiders, and your crustaceans. From the deuterostomes, so right there. We'll have to wait to learn about the echinoderms, which are sea stars, because as I've mentioned now two times previously, water is a little too cold. After we learn about our friends, the arthropods, we're going to jump straight to chordata, the vertebrates. Chordates are what most of us are probably most familiar with, fish, amphibians, reptiles, avians, and mammals like us. It's definitely going to be a fun climb through the phylogenic tree and I'm going to make sure we go on lots of adventures and get as close to the wildlife as possible. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you realize today's biology lesson was packed with extremely important information pertaining on how I would like you to view the world and all of its inhabitants from now on. I hope you enjoyed today's very sedate journey into the wilds classroom. Please remember to hit thumbs up and subscribe down below and share with all of your animal loving friends. Make sure you stay tuned for our next video when we check out the wonderful world of arthropods. See you next time here in the wild.